Let's look at the concept behind cylindrical shells. We'll derive the formula from one type of uh, setup of the method, and then we'll tie in disc and washer at the end. And sometimes it's impossible to find the volume by disc and washer. And so here's a situation where that's the case. Here's a function y equals the sine of x squared. And we're going to revolve this around the y-axis. So there's, there's definitely a gap between your region and your axis. And so you would think it would be washer. Now to do washer, what you should do is draw a typical rectangle that generates a typical washer. And we need to find the outer radius and the inner radius. But the problem with that is they're going to the same curve. The outer radius goes to the curve y equals sine squared sine x squared and then the inner curve also goes to the sine of x squared and so that's one problem another problem is that if you were to do it in washer and take this rectangle and move it upward to generate your your volume it's going to be in terms of y okay it's, it's going to be a function of y so having y equals is no good you're going to have to have x equals it's your job to solve this for x I mean it could be done Sometimes it can't even be done, but here it can be done, but take a look at what you get once you go to solve it for x. We have to take first the arc sine to get rid of the sine, and then the square root to get rid of the square. And you're not going to be able to integrate that, even after maybe squaring it. And so, basically, we can't do this with washer, okay? One problem is there's two problems. There's the solving for x and trying to integrate something that might ha involve that. And then the, the main problem, though, is that it, the outer radius and inner radius involve the same curve. So you can't do washer. So we need a different technique. And so let's call this technique the, the cylindrical shells method. And here's how it's made up. We're going to take a series of nested cylinders to find the volume. Okay, let's look at one cylinder. So here's a cylinder and it's a shell where it's a it's basically a cylinder removed, an inner center cylinder removed, and so we have this sort of cylindrical shell shape. There's a height to it. And we have an outer cylinder and an inner cylinder. So they both have a, a radius. The radius of the inner cylinder we'll call R sub inner the radius of the outer cylinder we call R sub outer. Okay, we have these two radii. And they have the same height, though. So the volume of the shell we use is going to be found by taking pi r squared. And we're going to subtract. We're going to have pi r squared for the outer minus pi r squared for the inner. So the volume of the shell is going to be the volume of the outer minus the volume of the inner. Great. All right, what we're going to do is manipulate this formula, and uh, by the time we're done with the next slide, we will derive how to get the volume using shell method. But we're just trying to get an understanding of what one shell, uh, how, how it behaves for one particular shell. So we're going to do some, some, some things to simplify this uh, algebraically. They both have a pi, they both have an h, so we factor that out. And we have outer squared minus inner squared, the radius of the outer squared minus the radius of the inner squared. Okay. Now we're going to get a little bit creative here. Uh, you know, a squared minus b squared is a minus b and a plus b. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to write it as a difference of squares, the outer plus the inner times the outer minus the inner. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, that's, you know, that's a you know, algebraic step, definitely. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. It's going to get creative here. We're going to divide and multiply by 2. And we're going to place them conveniently um, with the division by 2 underneath the outer plus the inner and the multiplication, multiplication by 2 on the, uh, on the outside in front. Now, we have not changed the formula at all. It really still is the same volume. We've just manipulated it in a convenient way. Here's why. So this it's like an average. If you take the two things and add them up and divide by two, 
what you're looking at is like an average. So we can rename it the average radius. That's the distance uh, here represented by the green. And call it R. The outer minus the inner would be the difference between those two. Let's call that delta R, the change in radius. And so in our formula, we replace this average radius with R. We replace this outer minus inner with delta R. And that's going to be the volume of one particular shell. And notice then, if we take that R there and put it out front, it'll be 2 pi R. And that's a common formula. That's the circumference. Okay. And then we have the height, and then we have the thickness. Well, think about it like this. If we were to slice this and unroll it, we'd have um, the circumference as one dimension, the height as another dimension, and the thickness as the third dimension. And that would be the volume of that, of that shape. Okay, great. So, so now what we're going to do is take infinitely many of these and get the volume of an entire shape generated by revolving some region. So back to our uh, y equals sine of x squared. And we're going to now, instead of drawing a rectangle that's, that's perpendicular, like disk and washer has, we're going to draw a rectangle that is parallel to the axis of rotation. There it is. And that will generate the shell. Remember, the axis is the y-axis. So that's going to generate a shell. It's not a washer. It's not a disk. It's a, it's a shell. And we know how to find the volume of that shell now. Okay, now to be technical, what we're going to do is have this average uh, xi with a bar over it will be the average uh, xi between the uh, two generic um, partition values of x. There's a left hand endpoint, a right endpoint, and this xi bar is in the middle. And from the previous slide, we know how to find the volume of this particular shell, 2 pi r h times the change in r. And so we need the radius. So what's in here, what's drawn in here is this green distance to represent the radius. We'll call it xi bar. The height of the rectangle is the function evaluated. It goes up to the function value, this blue value here. That's the, that's the height of the rectangle. And so we replace the r with xi bar. Replace the height with f of xi bar. And now, this will give me the volume of a typical shell. Call it the ith the 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 such shell, volume of the ith shell. And what we're going to do is change x. Start it from some um, small value of x and let it grow to, to the largest possible value of x. Then we're going to add up the volume of all those shells. Okay, if it's a finite number, then... We just this is a summation sign for a finite number. It's an approximation. It's not the the total volume, but this is a representation of an approximation to the volume. How will you get exactness? Let the number of subdivisions go to infinity. To get a better approximation, we need infinitely many shells essentially. So we put a limit as n goes to infinity in front. And hopefully you recognize when these two are next to each other like this that what we're looking at is a Riemann sum. The delta x becomes dx, the, this limit and sum become the integral symbol, the, uh, the xi bar gets replaced by x, and so in this particular setup, it's not always going to be this, but when you're revolving around the y-axis and your function is, is um, given to you where the height of the rectangle is the function value, then this will be your formula for finding the volume of the shape. There's some A and there's some B, some starting point and some ending point. Some A and some B, some starting point and some ending point that will generate the volume. And uh, if you're going about the y-axis and the curve is f of x and that represents the height of the rectangle, this will be how you get the volume. But you don't have to have the y-axis as your axis of rotation, you could have any, almost any axis. And so what we need is a formula in general, but this is, um, this is going to be the setup for this particular version of it. So what about in general? 
in general, what we're going to have is that there is a radius and a height. Okay, and what we need to do is be able to figure out the radius and the height. And it could be that uh, the integral doesn't have to be in terms of x. What's the radius going to be? It's going to be the distance from the axis of rotation to that typical rectangle. So now it's going to be critical that we start drawing in rectangles. A typical rectangle that generates you know, one particular shell, or maybe even go back and talk about one particular disc or one particular washer. We need the radius. We also need the height. And that's how tall the rectangle is going to be. If the axis is vertical, then we're going to be in terms of x. But if the axis is horizontal, then we're going to be in terms of y. Okay, and the 2 pi as a constant comes from the formula. So that's how you're going to calculate shell in general, the volume by using the shell method. And then finally, let's go ahead and tie it into disk and washer. When you go to draw your typical rectangle for disk and washer, it's perpendicular to the axis of rotation. But for shell, it's going to be parallel to the axis of rotation. Okay, and we've, we've seen it before. If you have a vertical axis like the y-axis, then disk and washer is in y. But if you have a horizontal, I mean, if you have a, a vertical axis like the, um, where you draw a parallel rectangle, then this guy gets moved left to right, so that's going to be in terms of x. Okay, disk and washer, if you have a horizontal axis like the x-axis, then it's going to be in terms of x. But if you have a horizontal axis with shell, you draw the parallel rectangle, then this guy gets moved upward, so that's going to be in terms of y. So it's important to know what variable you're in, and basically from here on out, we'll try to set up maybe you know both methods and try to figure out which method is best.